Hey everybody, Matt here with Field Contact. Welcome back to the channel. Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar, I posted a poll on my Field Contact Instagram page about what type of video to shoot and record next. And uh, I gave two options and I intend to film both of those, but this video won the poll and it was shooting and maneuvering around a vehicle. And the reason why I presented that as an option was because we are inside our vehicles an awful lot, right? Whether we're driving to and from work, uh, you know, dropping kids off at school or sporting events, practices, things like that, or going to the groceries, date nights, right? Just regardless, we're in our cars often. Um, so... There could be a time that we are faced and poised with the situation where we're going to have to act and make decisions. And if you've never had to act or make decisions around a vehicle, it can get um, it can get a little cumbersome or even daunting. So this video um, is going to be a tad bit longer. So I apologize in advance for that, simply because there is so much information, just even scraping the surface of shooting and maneuvering around a vehicle so i wanted to get as much information out as i could to those that this might be very new or very foreign to this way you have a a good a good foundation to learn and grow from so we're gonna go out we're gonna set up some steel we're gonna shoot some steel and uh, we're gonna talk about some considerations and things to keep in mind to be cognizant of should you be uh, in a deadly force encounter in and around a vehicle. Um, otherwise, thank you for stopping in. Please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Otherwise, I will see you guys on the next one. Cheers. Hey, everybody. So, we're out here. Got the vehicle set up, got our threat a little bit downrange, and you just saw a small glimpse of what it looks like to move and shoot around a vehicle, right? Um, obviously, shooting should be the last resort, um, especially if you have a vehicle. If you have a vehicle that is working, not disabled, etc., drive away, right? Um, avoidance is sometimes the best course of action so that you don't have to worry about everything that comes with the potential for that violent action. But let's say you're faced with a disabled vehicle in a violent encounter. And unfortunately, avoidance is no longer the course of action. You have to take some sort of action uh, to protect yourself and those that you care about, right? So there's some things to consider. Obviously a vehicle varies in size. You could have a truck, a sedan, uh, a small coupe, um, a full size truck, um, to even like a mobile home, right? Or like a van for like, you know, camping, overlanding, things like that. So there's a whole multitude of vehicles, but they all have general characteristics. Typically they're all some sort of metal or alloy um, they're gonna have wheels and tires and hub and axle assemblies they're going to have most of them right electric vehicles won't have a motor but for those of us gas diesel hybrids they're gonna have a motor still right and that is a large chunk of metal to put between you and between you and your threat so in this situation, we have our threat probably about 20 yards downrange. And our vehicle is disabled, so we're putting the front of the vehicle in. Now, you don't have to be a good shooter to draw a firearm and aim at something the size of a small house, right? If you have never picked up a gun before, I promise you, you could pick up a gun and hit a vehicle park 20 30 yards away because of how big it is um, so getting out of your vehicle is probably the best case right 
for this type of scenario. So you're inside your vehicle, it goes disabled, and now you have to make the decision that you're in this fight, how you wanna fight it. So just to get some things clear, yes, you can shoot through the windshield. This is my personal vehicle. I have to drive this home. And even though there is a crack in the windshield, I don't think my insurance company would like me punching holes through the windshield. That is an option. We'll talk about that though in a second. But let's say you're just trying to distance yourself from this giant bullet trap, okay? So first things first, you remove your seatbelt. And typically I'll take my other hand right here. I'll fish it down underneath, hit that seatbelt, throw it off. Now that seatbelt has cleared me, right? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my gun out. So my gun is out from the, my holster. And now I'm gonna start addressing threat or creating distance between me and threat. So next thing, door open. Doors tend to close though, right? So when you push that door open, get that foot out there to lock it in, whether you push it into the door or you push it down here at the bottom of the door. And then ideally right here, you're using your A pillar, right? Should they start shooting as a little bit of cover. Um, the A pillars have been shown to stop and deflect rounds but I wouldn't want to stay here very long. So you got your gun up, bang, bang. Maybe you fire some shots, they go down. And now you need to start deciding what to do. So as you saw when we first started, I pretty much did my shots and then I came all the way to the back of the truck, which you can't see right now. And now I have the whole entire vehicle between me and threat. And now I can assess. So obviously, depending on the scenario, it's gonna look different, right? But a big thing when shooting around a vehicle is putting as much as the vehicle between you and threat, using the big parts, motor, the wheels, the hubs, the axles, right? As positions of cover to fight and work around. So obviously, initially, we're shooting from here, using the A-pillar, Locking that foot in, bang, bang. But nine millimeter, 223, 45, 40, shoot. Even a 22 will rip through this sheet metal door, okay? Um, this is not cover. Uh, this isn't even concealment since you can see my legs, right? So don't get, don't get false protection thinking you can stand here and be safe. You're not. Um, the A pillar, of all vehicles are gonna be structurally stronger because they have to make the A pillar, B pillar, and the C pillars of certain vehicles strong for the event of a rollover, right? So that this isn't caving in. So this little bit of steel, right? That has been molded, formed, etc., into the car is gonna be stronger than this. However, this is a very small area and I wouldn't want to stay here very long. When we would do uh, high risk or felony stops, they would advocate being behind the A pillar or the back of the vehicle. And I always preferred the back of the vehicle because you're putting more metal, more obstruction between you and potential threat. So next time you go out to your vehicle, take a look at it and just kind of like put yourself in a, in a mini scenario and ask yourself, what would you do? Um, understand you can shoot through windows right um you can shoot through sides of the windows you can shoot underneath and we're going to do some of that but the main takeaway is if your vehicle is working leave right um, avoid it if your vehicle is disabled damaged not operable don't stay in the bullet trap get out of your vehicle and either put distance or um, if you need to engage that threat, whatever that may look like for you in that situation. But those are gonna be choices you're gonna have to make
at that time, okay? All right, guys, little so, different view. This is if we're like maybe stuck in traffic and we see a threat out of our passenger side or it could even be driver's side. It's gonna be very same whether what side it is. Obviously, same rules apply. If you can get out of the area, get out of the area, but if not and you're faced and you're forced to engage whatever threat or perpetrator, then um, remember these are just tools for your toolbox, right? Or maybe some just tidbits of knowledge. Um, you can shoot through glass, okay? Your, your side windows are typically gonna be a tempered glass. Um, those of us with tint, uh, that's why it stays together because the tint is adhering it all together, but it'll fall apart. So you can very well shoot through glass. Front windshields are laminated safety glass and you can totally shoot through those. Just understand due to the curvature of windshields typically, depending on which way you're firing, where your point of aim is and where your point of impact is, is going to be different because it's either going to go, it's going to curve up a little bit or curve down a little bit, depending on which way you're shooting, whether you're shooting out or shooting in. But most of us are wearing our seatbelts because we're safe, right? So like I said, first thing to do, left hand, swim it underneath your chest of your seatbelt, down to your seatbelt buckle, release it, throw it. It's no good to you anymore, okay? Then you're gonna clear your garment like we've talked about in other videos, get that gun out. Obviously, this is a, a tight area, okay? It's comfortable when I'm driving, family road trips, camping, things like that, but it's a tight area to be working in with the gun. So you're gonna have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. So I'll typically drive my left foot into the floorboard so I can push into the seat to turn, get a good sight, get your hits, find your door handle, and then get out, get out of that vehicle, however that may look. curveball how many of you have a truck gun or a car gun how many of you carry another gun uh, when you're going out and about I can tell you I typically carry a bigger gun when I'm going out and about because this is good to work to this because this is a force multiplier we've already talked about right it's a bigger firearm, faster projectile, goes further, right? And more magazine capacity. And I'm able to control this much easier. So, you saw us engage threat, remove seatbelt, two precise hits on steel. We exited the driver's seat. And then I pushed back to the passenger side, or the back seat, where I had my rifle, grab my rifle, grab the charging handle, charged around, came to the rear of the truck, uh, exposed myself probably more than I should have, got some good hits, came back to the front of the truck, used an engine block, wheel assembly, and got two more, three more effective hits, right? But I bring this up to, to talk about um, your your height over bore, right? So you have your point of aim, and then you have your point of impact, okay? So if you had your rifle sitting right here, your dot or scope is going to be over the hood line, and it'll be on target. You'll pull this trigger, and this round's gonna fire, and it's gonna skip through your own hood or your engine bay, making that round ineffective. So, remember when you have a firearm to get up on your cover, right? But make sure that you're clear of it. So, in this instant, I would rest my magazine on it. Um, or another thing you can do is you can cant your rifle. 
you can't your rifle it creates a little bit lower profile for you as far as somebody firing back at you but it reduces that height over bore factor so just some other things to think about All right, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Um, obviously, today's video was simply on uh, shooting from a vehicle, maneuvering around a vehicle, and considerations when engaging a threat uh, and you have a vehicle. Um, obviously, we talked about real heavy is if your vehicle is not disabled and it is still operational, leave. Leave the area. Uh, back up, do a U-turn, go forward, whatever the case may be, get away from that situation. If your car is disabled, um, damaged, inoperable, and you are still fa faced with a, uh, a deadly force encounter, and you have your firearm, and you've made the conscious decision that this is your life or theirs type scenario, and you've in you're deciding to make that conscious decision to engage whatever that threat may look like, um, we talked about considerations of the vehicle. Obviously, the steel was, you know, 20 yards away. And so putting as much of the vehicle between us and them is going to be a huge benefit um, because you're going to have more of a bullet trap to stop the projectile from reaching you because it's going to tumble through everything else and lose its energy and momentum and dissipate before ever reaching you wherever you might be. So if you're at the A pillar, you know, get your good shots to get away from the car, right? So if you're getting out of the car, because maybe you're going to the back of your car to get your rifle, get those good shots, get your rifle, and then push back maybe further. Um, we talked about shooting underneath the car, using the wheel and tire and axle and hub assembly as a form of cover, because those are big, thick pieces of metal that'll stop a projectile. Um, talked about height over bore considerations when shooting a rifle around a vehicle your optic right will be set on the target dead to right you'll be good to go you'll flip that safety bang away on that trigger and you'll find that you're not going to hit it because your rounds actually maybe skipping off of your your trunk or your hood or the roof of your car whatever the case may be so make sure you have a good good sight picture and you know you're a little bit higher or you have to cant the rifle so that you can get those good effective hits obviously this is this isn't something i do every day so there was some shooting that was very slow uh, and very precise and methodical and that's obviously because this is my real vehicle there's spent casings all over inside this car now i'm gonna have to get out so i don't get pulled over for speeding and have some explaining to do but uh come out and shoot around your vehicle just do it slow right um if you have to step further step further out right but just so you start getting that mindset of you using your vehicle as cover or concealment um maybe prone out a little bit flatter uh, away from the wheel so you don't have to worry about maybe popping a tire or something but at the end of the day if you have a tool right get out go be purposeful with that tool go train with it um, and just be just be proficient so that if god forbid that time comes where you your family your loved ones or you know an innocent bystander needs needs that person to intervene that you're ready for that task so whatever that looks like for you just get out get reps in and uh, have fun while doing it because what's not to enjoy about being outside, getting some sun, fresh air, and shooting at the same time. So again, thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys liked the video. Hopefully you liked the shooting. Um, be sure to hit me in comments if you have questions, gripes, complaints. Um, be sure to also follow the Instagram page, Field Contact, Field underscore Contact for other other content other polls things like that 
Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers.